Of course they do, and they're working on it. In the meantime, they'd like to remind everyone to celebrate the fact that it does see Hispanics, Asians, Pacific Islanders, and Jews. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh, let me stop that. And... Shift F5. Did that work? No, it didn't. Sorry, I wanted it to go right back to where we were. Anyway, uh, that... That episode was obviously based on a real-life incident, and that was the fact that uh, uh, one of the facial recognition things on iPhone or something like that, they very quickly found out couldn't see black people. Uh, and so, and by the way, the end of the episode is that they finally do get rid of the system. The, the, the board uh, is never convinced by the idea that it's racist, but what they have to start doing is assign a white person to walk with every black person in order to set off all the various devices. And so Porsche uh, argues that they'll need so many parking spaces by the year so-and-so that they'll run out of space. And so that's what finally makes them decide to get rid of the facial recognition stuff. Anyway, just another thing about not thinking about other people. And again, it can be very um, unintentional. All right, the, the first person to make, although I don't know why if you're making facial recognition software, it wouldn't occur to you that somebody else has a different face than you. But anyway, so uh, another example of something where the uh, society is uh, subtly biased. Uh, here's a woman that wouldn't wear her uh, a body armor because uh, well, she had to have breast reduction surgery because of the wealth, uh, health effects of wearing her body armor. And um, uh, she... Somebody else was killed because they, it was too difficult to wear it. Oh, uh, and, and I'm sure many people are, are aware of this, that uh, women's restrooms tend to be, let me see, if it's, yeah, that's all. Women's restrooms tend to be uh, big long lines and, and men's don't. And uh, at this one theater, they decided to, well, let's just make them both just, you know, whoever wants to go in wants to go in. Well, as I said, that actually just made things more convenient for the men. Uh, that... As it's, let's see, where is it down here? Uh, even if male and female toilets had an equal number of stalls, the issue wouldn't be resolved because women take up to 2.3 times as long as men to use the toilet. Uh, the English say the word toilet a lot. Uh, women make up the majority of the elderly and disabled, two groups that will tend to need more time in the toilet. Women are also more likely to be accompanied by children as well as disabled and older people. And there's a uh, 20 to 25% chance of women in childbearing age who may be on their period at any one time and therefore may need to change a tampon or sanitary pad. In other words, equal amount of space is not equal if you're trying to serve people. And, and the interesting thing was that this was at a, th this all came out at a showing of um, I am not your Negro uh, in, uh, in this cinema. So it was about, you know, race relations and yet here they had this problem with uh, gender. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah, uh, the, the, there's all, all kinds of other reasons why women are more likely. Get this, uh, that w when a woman is involved in a car crash, she is 47% more likely than a man to be seriously injured because the seatbelts are designed for a male anatomy, right? All right, you've probably heard about this before. Uh, again, another thing where you sort of figure out, my gosh, I never even thought about this before. Uh, this uh, a woman had a blog, uh, her name is Bechtel, and she just sort of, in passing, said, think about this. How many movies have you seen where there are at least two women in the movie, they actually talk to each other, and they talk to each other about something other than a man? Now, it's not that such films don't exist, but you start going through the list and you realize, my God, there, there aren't that many. And, and, and do the reverse. Are there at least two men? Do they talk to each other about something other than a woman? Almost every film made in history passes that test. But uh, increasingly, they're passing the Bechtel test. But again, the idea that if you're a woman and you grow up in this society, uh, then you are programmed to believe that what men do is more important. Uh, let's see. So here's some Marxist feminism, uh, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk about more of that in a minute. Um, Marxist feminists argue that capitalism is the main cause of women's oppression in the family. Although, having said that, and there's a study question on this, let me tell you which one it is. It is number 123. Uh, it says, perhaps surprisingly, Marxist economics is not necessarily easily modified to accommodate a feminist version. This is so because Marxist theory of discrimination is based on what and not what. 
Uh, in fact, because of the sort of women, work women do throughout the world, in many instances, they cannot even be counted as technically exploited under Marxism. Under Marx, only wage laborers are exploited. If you remember back on that uh, first exam, that uh, if you're not working in the workplace, you're not being exploited. All right. So how do you deal with that as a Marxist economist? Uh, well, capitalism is the main cause of women's oppression. Uh, because uh, they, and they also they reproduce the workforce, they socialize the next generation, they absorb men's anger that would otherwise be directed at capitalism. They, they soak up their husband's frustration that comes from being exploited at work, but they're not exploited. See, so it's kind of funny that, that, that it doesn't fit real well. Uh, and uh, then they also represent a reserve army of cheap labor, and when they're not needed, then they just go back to their domestic role. And uh, this is a whole thing about uh, the, a, a productive system of a, of a society. Here's the natural resource base. And then here's the, what they're, they're calling it, sweat equity. It's um, do-it-yourself, bartering, social, family, community structures, unpaid household and parenting, volunteering, sharing, all the things that are not market but are actually contributing significantly towards our economic well-being. And then we have the economic stuff as you, as you go up there through that whole thing. Uh, let's see, what is feminist economics? Okay, uh, let me give you this example right here of something that feminist economists made a really interesting argument about. As I mentioned earlier, when we uh, calculate GDP, we, we only count uh, wage, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, market activities. We don't count non-market activities. All right, so think about this. You know, oh, well, you know, that, 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 uh, that seems like it might be a reasonable way to do it. Uh, well, check this out. There have been studies of developing economies where they have, I don't know if it's kind of freaking you out for me to never be in the shot or not, or maybe it's making you feel more comfortable. Uh, but I could go over here, but I have to kneel down, uh, which is kind of weird. I feel like I'm marrying you all. Um, the, uh, okay, you've got a developing country somewhere. And the economists come in and they say, hey, we need to raise your GDP. Let's build a factory. So they build a, big, uh, they build a factory, and sure enough, GDP goes up because there's more market activity. But uh, a number of studies have discovered that the lives of women actually end up worse off under those circumstances. Think about it, that before the factory was there, the men actually helped with some stuff around the house. There were some tasks that they took care of around the house. And so now the women have those tasks as well, but that's okay. Now the family has money. No, 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 no. Now the man has money, not the family, the man. And the women uh, complain that they actually were happier before the factory came in. What's the problem? We're using the measure of prosperity as GDP rather than uh, looking at the uh, lifestyle of the uh, women in the situation. All right, let's see. So is that all I wanted on that one? Oh, yeah, I've got to show you that, but that's in a later slide. All right. Women bear 86% of austerity burden, Commons uh, figures reveal. This is uh, from the UK, obviously. And, uh, you know, they, they had the brilliant idea after the financial crisis, hey, I know what we need to do, cut back on social services. Uh, we fortunately did the opposite. But um, for the most part, uh, but they, they did a study and they said 86% of their cutbacks on social services impacted women, all right, because women were the ones who were benefiting from them in the first place. That sucks to be a woman there. It looks like Theresa May on the right there giggling. Good for her. Uh, let's see. Uh, according to Alfred Meyer, this is, this is uh, someone who won the Nobel Prize in economics here, whose name I can't remember. Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I uh, thought it was a world. Well, yeah, let me read it to you. According to Alfred Marshall, uh, the founding father of, uh, of the science, economics is the study of men as they live and think and move in ordinary business of life. Marshall's casual allusion to men captures what feminist economists believe is the big pro first big problem, the habit of ignoring women. Uh, the economy, they argue, is often thought of as the world of money, machines, and men. This is reflected in how GDP is measured. Wage labor is included. Unpaid work at home is not. Uh, let's see here. And that's not Marilyn Waring. Uh, okay, yeah, I actually told you about some of that stuff already. Uh, pardon me while I yell at the dog. Cobble! Come! Come, Cobble, come! Come! Here he comes! Here he comes! All right, let's go outside, buddy! Come on! Come on, go yell at the dogs. That's it. All right, uh, hopefully he'll take that. Here, I'll throw, a, I'll throw a bone out there. I'm going to throw this. Ready, 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 go! And he just stared at it. Okay. Uh, by the way, now a school of thought that fits this whole sort of 
uh, framework really well, as I've already said, is institutionalism. Here's an article by Thorsten Veblen from 1898-99, The Barbarian Status of Women. And he goes on about how uh, women and the whole the, the whole concept of marriage uh, was related to to property rights. You, you have some Veblen to look at in the chapter. Uh, and so this is a very long history of being concerned with women's issues in institutionalism. Uh, men were in charge of the hunt, women were in charge of the home, and nobody argued about it too much. Uh, now, Veblen also argued that he thought that uh, as uh, society became more advanced that this would stop being true, right? That, that women would, would, would uh, be treated more equally. Uh, okay, I have a bark collar that I'm about to put on the dog rather than on me, pardon me.